inside this software and after that I'm going to show you how you can use your cell phone to if you don't have just professional microphones and software and uh, the only thing you have is your own phone and I'm going to show you how you can use a specific app that give you better opportunities or better options to record better sound for your game okay so after that if you have any question you can keep it like um, after we had a presentation on the software, you can, so we have three sections. If you have question regarding our presentation, so my presentation on Fully, you can ask after presentation. And then if you have question for the software, uh, Pro Tools, uh, recording sound on Pro Tools, you can ask after this section. And then for the last one, when we have fun, uh, just teaching you how to use, um, app on your phone, you can ask later. And if you, at the end, we give you more time in case you have a new question for each section, okay? Fully sounding games. Uh, so before you, we talking about uh, fully sound, I wanna just uh, kind of uh, talking about the general sound effects we have either in film or game. Um, because uh, usually uh, they are the sound effects we use for both area, game and sound effect, they have been recorded in the same way. So uh, we be in uh, some examples or some uh, point that I may bring, bring here, they are related to film, but still it can be applied to uh, game as well. So when we have in the sound game, so we're gonna have some uh, sound effects or uh, some hard sound effect that we usually we use them uh, in the sound library. They have been recorded before and we can uh, just find them online or some um, archive sound effect and we can use them. And these sound effects, they are usually hard to record them or they are dangerous and expensive to record them like explosion or shotgun or some, um, uh, like, uh, uh, some uh, crash sound. So they are really hard uh, to, um, for us or expensive or dangerous to record for our, us to go and record them. This is why we go and do sound uh, libraries, either online or some archive sound, we purchase them and we use uh, them in our work. Or we go and record some sound effects wild. So this can be more about the ambiences that we, or background sound we use in our uh, film. For instance, if the background sound of your uh, game is uh, wood or jungles or mountains and you or maybe cities you go and uh, record some ambiences the background sound in general and you add them or maybe uh, the background is going to be rainy day so you're going to record rainy uh, rain in a rainy day and then record just or use some uh, again fully tricks later I'm going to show you or maybe explain a little bit on how you can do this so uh, to record this those sounds uh, but uh, this is why they call it wild sound because um, you record them only without having any image, uh, any source of image, you only record them uh, to have, uh, to use them in your uh, own purpose. And then we have a recording fully sound, which is um, before they name it fully, it was direct to picture sound. And uh, usually in film and game, they use uh, sound, uh, they, they use uh, the record a fully sound when they have image because this is specifically uh, for that image they create those sound maybe later some people they can use the same sound, uh, sound that you, you create or record for your uh, game or film but you when you do record in a fully sound you create those film specifically sync in sync with your image 
and it's all related to what's happening to this image that you recorded. And what you want to do today, either using uh, Pro Tools or uh, cell phone, we want to have image, and in sync with the image, we create those sound, and in the looping mode, and uh, we create them as uh, we want. Okay, Foley sound, or direct to picture sound, uh, is the reproduction of everyday sounds in sync with the footage that has already been shot. They call it everyday sound because mainly they are detailed sound, but in some cases, specifically in games, they are not everyday sounds. For instance, uh, when, like in a game, you have uh, broken bones, they are not everyday sounds, or there are some other uh, smashing or some mm, punching sound, or all other sounds, they are not everyday life. Uh, so they, they say uh, the everyday sound because mainly for film, it goes that way, because it details sound, soft sound of like uh, human footsteps uh, or touching objects or cloth path as the character moves. But we still use this all details sound as fully sound for game, but game in you know, most of the cases uh, extend that to using uh, fully sound. However, in some films, so there may be some film that they have surgeries, and for all these surgery scenes, they don't use the actual material to record sound. But I, I don't, uh, instead, they use some vegetables um, on melon or um, orange or other things to create those uh, sounds. Uh, and then when you sync them to the image, the audience, uh, so they are the same sound. However, they, in some cases, they, they have been exaggerated. So in Foley sound, uh, usually they cate uh, categorize in three category, footsteps, prop handling, and cloth movement. Footsteps are uh, any creature that you have in your image, uh, including human, robots, uh, um, any uh, animals, anything that you have, they have footsteps, we record them on the fully stage. And then we have prop handling as your characters um, touch anything or any um, objects inside the image, then you want to record them inside the fully stage. And cloth movement, uh, so uh, if you have any curtain inside the um, image that moves, or your uh, character has some cloth, um, clothes and they move, then you want to just record them on the fully stage. So they, they divide this thing, uh, fully sound, in these three categories. Sorry. So the origins of uh, fully arts is uh, coming back to the radio plays uh, in the 1920s when they, when they uh, recorded this uh, um, either um, voiceovers, narrations, or the acts inside the uh, radio plays. And they, in the middle of this um, uh, recording, they, ha they had to create some sound effects within some material, creating the, those sound effects, uh, including footsteps, touching props, or all of these sounds. Uh, to kind of give dramatic sense on what is happening. It's not just only being words that being passed between the characters or someone who narrated the story, but also using these all sounds as the kind of way of, way of describing uh, what is happening in the story. Jack Foley is, was a radio uh, sound artist, so he he was one of the members of this radio who created those sounds, but later he, but later he decided to. But um, later, he brought this uh, way of recording sound to the film in the Universal Studio. So that time, they secretly recorded those sounds uh, for films uh, using the same trick, but, uh, in, uh, but, but it, with the difference that um, when they had the radio, they, they created those sounds live with all sound without image because they, it was radio drama. 
that they play. So, um, but here, when the, in, the, in Universal Studio, they recorded when they had the image. So they, in sync with the image, uh, they recorded, created those sounds, and recorded and later added to the sound. And these all detailed sound they uh, recorded that give more uh, dimensions to the sound of the film. So Jack Foley is the person who uh, created uh, kind of the pioneer of this uh, sound, this way of sound recording for film, or, and later we had in the game. And then later, uh, before he died, or not, at the beginning they said it direct to picture sound, and later they create a specific studio only for fully estate and for this direct to the picture stage, and then they decided to name it fully, and it, then after that, it's fully sound remain uh, for this act of, uh, this way of recording sound. So what happens during a fully recording session? So uh, in professional world, where they have enough budget, enough money to record uh, sound, so they uh, kind of go to the uh, fully stage, they have, enough objects, as you see in the image, and different kinds of floor that they can, based on what is uh, the image, what does the image suggest, or what they uh, decide to have as the, that kind, kind of footstep, they use different floors uh, to walk and record those sounds for footsteps, and for the props, as you see in the image, there are many props that they can use to record uh, sound, as they see the, image. So they put the image in a loop recording way. And it repeats and repeats and then they uh, repeat the act and record and record and then later uh, they decide which take it was better and use that take. So in the fully stage we have a fully artist and fully mixer. So usually at least you should have two people. Sometimes, sometimes if you are the only person, so the fully mixer and fully art is gonna be the same. So you, you hit recording and you act as the same. So, so at the same time. But usually you have fully art artists who uh, just imitate the act or create the sound. And you have fully mi mixer who record the sound. And later you might have fully editor who edit those recorded the sound. But sometimes fully mixer and fully editor, they are the same. So uh, uh, in the best uh, way that you want to describe uh, who um, being involved in this process, we have three people, um, fully artist, fully mixer, and fully editor. But usually all these three can be um, one because, uh, because of some limitations. So again, the sounds are recorded in real time to be synced with visuals. This is a very important point because you want to have uh, the same duration for the act and it takes less your time uh, to edit them. So for the ideal, I, I'm just, uh, this example I brought here is the ideal way of recording uh, fully sound. So when it goes to the different kinds of microphone we use, so um, for some of you who are not familiar with this uh, type of microphone, so um, type of microphone can be devised to, maybe you, when you search on microphone, they tell you we have dynamic microphone, condenser microphone, or ribbon microphone. So here, why, what we are saying doesn't matter is dynamic condenser or ribbon. What does matter is directionality of the microphone. For the directionality of the microphones uh, is uh, we have um, different types of microphone here. We have omnidirectional microphone that any type of uh, sound, uh, the sound sound coming from everywhere being captured with that uh, microphone uh, in the same way if their distance is similar. So it doesn't matter sound coming from the back sides or front of the microphone. But uh, when it goes to, this is why they said omnidirectional microphone. And we have bidirectional microphone, as you see in the image, the sound coming only from the side or, uh, or sound coming only from the front or back of microphone being captured in the best way. But the sound coming from the sides is being uh, rejected, as you see in this image, bidirectional microphone. And uh, what helps us, what, what we prefer usually in capturing dialogue and capturing fully sound is uh, 
uh, more directional microphone, like cardioid microphone, supercardioid microphone, or hypercardioid and ultra um, cardioid microphone. So um, cardioid microphone is all, it's better comparing to other bidirectional or omnidirectional directional microphone. The sound coming from the front being captured in the best way, and for the sound coming from the side uh, being uh, captured, but not as good as sound coming from the front. But in supercardioid microphone, uh, sound coming um, the, in front of the microphone being captured in the best way, and some co sound coming from back of the microphone, as you see, uh, being captured uh, better than sides uh, or better than almost uh, the area here, but it's not as good as front, uh, but the sound coming from this side completely being rejected. For the hypercardial microphone, the sound, again, being direction, uh, they would call it more directional because they, um, the best one is here on uh, the front and the back is a little bit better than a uh, supercardioid. But the best one is shotgun microphone, is the last one, ultracardioid microphone, that like what we have here, uh, that being uh, very directional and sound should completely co directly come to the front of microphone to be captured. So as you see, the sound for coming from this part, this part, or here this area being rejected and a little bit being captured with sound coming from the back of the microphone. The best area is coming from, uh, from the front of the microphone. So then, so the uh, sound, so this is the ideal way to use shotgun microphone. Um, but if you don't have, if you want to just purchase like USB microphone, so try to find that they are more cardioid microphone than like omnidirectional or bidirectional. So uh, not, not only for fully sound, but in for recording dialogues or sound effects, it's better if you use this uh, type of microphones that they, they are more directional because you don't want to have extra noises when you are recording sounds. So this uh, type of microphone we have is a Sennheiser uh, MKH416. Uh, it's a good shotgun microphone that's being used always on the set to record dialogues. And it's really good for recording uh, this detailed sound for uh, fully sound. Another point that I want, wanted to bring here is mic placement in fully recording. So again, we said that um, we're gonna use like this directional microphone, then we're gonna shoot directly to the source of the, town, the sound, but not too close to the sound because we don't, you don't wanna have this all um, rumbling or detailed the noises uh, that comes all about are all from like if there's cross passes coming from high frequency changes. So you want to have uh, not too close to the sound, but not too far, somewhere around six inches or maybe more, uh, but not that too close, too far. So you want to always listen to the sound you're recording. Okay, uh, whenever you record, don't just if I just uh, say put this here and touch this material and record sound, it, it doesn't tell me what I'm recording. It doesn't tell me what is happening here, okay? But I should listen using headphone, listen to see what is the output of my recording, what exactly I'm recording here, not what is happening here. So then you don't want it to, to be too close and too far for when you're recording. And it's better, we didn't have, uh, unfortunately we actually had, but it was, before me to hand out all of them. So this is why I didn't bring uh, like a mic stand, but it's better. So I have one stabilizer that can just help me to um, not that much shaking. Um, when when it only I touch this one, it's gonna take some just shaking or uh, capture some shaking and other movement that I have. But this stabilizer, at least bring it down this uh, movement. But the, the ideal way is to use a mic a stand uh, and then you bring your uh, whatever the objects or put it, if you want to record footsteps you put uh, a mic stand here and you walk toward the 
microphone and uh, record those sounds. So this is example I brought. So the first, this um, the first one is a good way of putting uh, you, you as you see you have microphone as uh, on the mic stand and you have enough distance here and to record the sound and he is listening to what is recording. But here in this example, you can see the just the mic is too close. But I guess the, the if they got this too close, they had a purpose to maybe exaggerate this, um, some um, putting their shoes on these um, stones, or these rocks here to record those sounds. But uh, always, always listen to the sound you're recording. Uh, so then four ways uh, that fully affects uh, enhance a film or game, so I put it here, a film, but it's like uh, just make a scene more realistic so when you have this all everyday sound or this detailed sound, so it's, it's not just only uh, one dimension of like distant, uh, just the ambiences or distant footsteps, but then if you add this um, close footstep mm -hmm. or movement or detail to the sound, it's, uh, it sounds uh, more real. And fully sound makes it seem more immersive. Um, because, uh, because it's real, so then it goes to, um, to just uh, create some immersive sense to this um, scene that you add the fully sound. Fully sound creates more believable ambient sound. So when you have these all um, details that then the other part is more believ believable, and fully sound adds more details to the sound, giving more dimensions to the sound of the film uh, or the game when you have all um, just detail sound, then it's, it's like the way that you add more dimension to the image. Uh, so then the same, uh, the same as we had for the first one is more, uh, give this more realistic to the same scene that you, you've uh, uh, recording a fully sound for. So for, uh, I have one video here. It's more going to talk about uh, how some sounds being recorded using some fully sound on uh, recording uh, some fully sound for film, but it's gonna be applicable to uh, your purpose uh, for game. So I try to find some sound for some videos. You want an air purifier, Sorry. but you're no expert, so you kinda need reviews. Oh, Google's got user reviews and expert reviews Why? from tech experts. Tech experts? Sure, find reviews from people who know what they're talking about. Shop with Google. So I Under all the screaming in this scene right. from The Big Lebowski, you can hear a crunch. <laughs> That's meant to be Lebowski's back crack. It's weird because... But the noise you hear isn't a bunch of bones cracking against each other. Right. It's actually this. <laughs> Movies are created in a studio like this one, no. using a variety of props. And among the most unusual actually. of these props is food. I'm Mark of the Stands, so I, I'm a full work in film I make sound effects foods bring organic sounds that that you can control but when it comes to lettuce you know get a little bit of this from. crunchy sound and that sort of gives it the uh, like it's it's go, splitting okay. the head open a little bit that's how he mm. achieved the sound in the film dead man and for the sound of ashes fluttering in shutter island he so used coconut he flakes that page? I don't know why we're <laughs> when we worked on uh, Julie and Julia the lobster scene where she's me real hesitant about cooking lobster, it's live, and so we... Sorry, Professor. No, it's okay. Yeah, I explained that. Oh, yeah, it was in Safari, probably. Let me open the link. Stuff. We love stuff. And there's some really great stuff out there. But I... Under all the screaming in this scene from The Big Lebowski, you can hear a crunch. <laughs> That's meant to be Lebowski's back cracking, but the noise you hear isn't a bunch of bones cracking against each other. It's actually this. Many sounds you hear in movies are created in a studio like this one, using a variety of props. And among the most unusual of these props is food. I'm Marco Costanzo. I, I'm a Foley artist. I, I work in film. I make sound effects. Foods bring organic sound.
sounds that, that you can control when it comes to lettuce. You get a little bit of this crunchy sound, and that sort of gives it the like it's, it's splitting the head open a little bit. That's how he achieved the sound in the film Dead Man. And for the sound of ashes fluttering in Shutter Island, he used coconut flakes. When we worked on uh, Julie and Julia, the lobster scene where she's real hesitant about cooking lobster, it's live. And so we actually went out and got a lobster for that and tried to bang it around. It was good for the grabs of the lobster and the drop in the pot, but not for the lobster trying to get out. <laughs> so I have a pair of gloves that I put some duck feet on, which are very hard, so I could control the bang and the ring on the side of the uh, pot. These subtle accents, the snaps, the crunches, the gurgles, they draw you in. The sounds in the background aren't heard. But what we do is we replace all those sounds with whatever emotions are, are, are present. Bad Foley doesn't sound like it's right for that moment. Listen to this clip from X-Men Origins. It's supposed to be a dramatic moment, but it's spoiled by the cartoonish sounds made by Wolverine's claws. Good Foley, on the other hand... If you were to hear it, you would think it's production. It wasn't re-recorded first. <laughs> aren't so much trying to capture reality as they're trying to capture a sound that will contribute to the mood of the scene. I remember having some commercial people come in. We were doing a Pepsi commercial and they, they we were putting a glass down on the table. We did it and there were three or four people and they were, well, eh, eh, try it again. We'd try it again. Eh, eh, well, you know what? Can you get it a little um, bluer? So we're, it's like, well, this is now this is the direction we're getting, and how do you get make something bluer? So now you got to get into their heads, and it's like, what do they mean by what? Are, so I'm thinking, what do they want? Sultry, sexy? Are they disappointed? <laughs> so now you're verbalizing it, you're into the emotion of it, and then as you put it down, you're putting it down a little differently than earlier. You know, it has a little bit more finesse to it, and that actually took probably 15, 20 minutes to do a glass down, which would probably take about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Everything is so far-fetched, and, and could this really happen in, in real life? Well, the bottom line is, it is real life at this moment, and we want to make it sound as real as possible. To find out how your disgust mechanism can be used against you, click here. Disgust is a basic emotion, an innate reaction to things like rotting food, infectious diseases. Okay. It's all, I just want to just uh, give you examples of how... And some can be by using some uh, different sorts and not the real material that we see in the gate or in the film to record sound. Instead, we can use some other uh, material to kind of uh, imitate or just create the same uh, sound that we expect to have in our um, image. Okay, it was all about this uh, introduction to the fully sound. Uh, and other point, when you are recording sound, if you have some fast movement in your film that uh, if you recorded it, you have, or you have your um, in a place that you might have some windy wings or something, you can use a windshield or some foam that cover this uh, uh, the microphone you have to not capture uh, the external noises as you record. Any question for this one? It's, okay, um, in most of the cases, uh, you know which sound you want, and you want to just um, think, listen to actual sound that you experience in the real world, and you, you want to think which material you, you, it helps you. For instance, when I ask some students to go and uh, search about fire sound, sound of fire, and ask them, and ask them how they can use fully uh, different material to record sound of fire, and they found okay if they add some wind sound, and then on top of the wind they use some bubble wraps or some um, chocolate wraps or all these things uh, and add this all sound, uh, just recording them and layer with all the sound together, 
they can create sense of fire. Um, these are the examples. Or uh, some other sounds. Um, you can maybe when you have oil on a um, pot, uh, it sounds like it, it, and it, on the pot uh, and in, in the oven. Maybe uh, on top of the oven, you can feel it can be some s similar sound to rain if you record them. So what your eyes see is different than what, what your ears hear. So then you can, you know, uh, sometimes they can t just give you some sound effects and tell you what it can be, but your ears say some things than the actual sound it is. So it may be, in some cases, you should train your ears to pay attention to this, the, in the everyday life, the everyday sound that you hear. And maybe if you want to, like for instance, uh, for the example I brought this, um, when it go for fire, specific fire, they thought, they, they, uh, they thought how they can divide the sound to different layers and record those sound to, to uh, create this uh, expected sound that you want to have. Any Okay, are you ready to uh, just having some practices using For some of you who are not in the film department, are you familiar with the software Pro Tools? You, you have. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This. Okay. Um, you know, I didn't bring uh, Adobe Audition because Adobe Audition, unfortunately, doesn't give you the purpose you have. We want to give it, give you loop recording as you have different takes and you have playlists when you're recording sound. So uh, this is why I didn't bring um, Adobe Audition and I prefer to have this software here. On this software, uh, you can um, specifically just choose as part of the film that you ha that, that act happens, for instance, foot step. For instance, this foot step, I, if I, uh, I tried to download, um, we received some example of, I received some example of your works, but it was not completed and I couldn't have this image on this uh, um, software. And this is uh, why I, I tried to find, uh, find some, some uh, videos on YouTube to do and download them and play them here for you to at least to give you the sense of what's happening there. And I'm gonna use this example of your uh, game for recording sound with the game, for with the sorry, with uh, iPhone or cell phone. Uh, here, I um, what happens in uh, fully stage before the fully stage before they go to the fully stage they prefer the session for the fully and uh, because they don't wanna just take you their time when they are in the fully and uh, fully stage always in, is expensive and they prefer the session before they go. Uh, and when they go, they, everything is ready and they can start uh, recording the sound they want. So here, uh, for instance, here for the, this, uh, in the video you see, the first act I wanna choose here is um, foot step. And we have foot step here. So at, uh, I wanna just select this area that you know, start with the foot step here, like let's say here. So I wanna select this part as the character stand here. 
I want to select this one and consolidate this one with the silent. It's not nothing. So I use Option Shift three to consolidate this area. Then, as when I, whenever I select this one and I play, it gives me this uh, act that I have um, uh, selected. And also uh, because I don't want to, <coughs> sorry, I don't want this act when I play. It, uh, it starts exactly at the beginning of my act. Sorry. So uh, I, I don't want this uh, happen exactly at the beginning of uh, the act I have. I add some pre-roll roll to uh, when I hit play. So it starts a little bit, so maybe around 10 seconds, um, no, maybe frames. Let's see what we can have. So I go to window, and on the transport window, I, oh, I had all it on the transport window here, I can add some pre-roll. Here on the pre-roll, I add, um, here is, uh, hour is, uh, uh, is minutes, no, it's hour is minutes, and this one should be, this one is second, so sorry, I got confused, so it depends on, okay. Yes, it's a second frame and the first part is minute. So it depends how, what, which uh, measurement you choose for uh, your uh, time code here. Here I'm gonna add like um, 0, 0.23. And then when I hit play, So it doesn't start exactly when I want this one, uh, this uh, act start. It starts from the beginning of my session here. Okay, then I go with the pre-roll, um, sorry, uh, go with the loop recording. So I have this one is a recording and I can right click and go to the loop recording. And the loop recording, I can record this uh, act that I, when I select in different times. So to have, uh, when you choose loop recording, you can choose loop recording in Adobe Audition, but it, it doesn't give you the option that having the playlist of these all record, loop recordings I have. So here on my, on Pro Tools, I can go to um, my uh, setup, to preferences, and here on the operation, I choose this option that this, uh, when I am in the loop recording, it automatically create this playlist for me. So I hit this one and hit okay. Then it gives me the option when I'm recording in the loop recording mode, it, it helps me to have the playlist and I show you how. So and here, uh, what, uh, when you, before you recording, everything, you wanna just check what is the input and output of uh, your, uh, the track that you're recording. Here I have this IO box, this Scarlett IO box, and I have connected my microphone to this um, IO box, or you can have other uh, interface. So this interface that I have is IO box, uh, this uh, Scarlett. So I already have defined this, um, interface by in the uh, my in my playback engine here uh, that uh, this one is called a solo USB so it defines this one it gives you different option for me uh, it, for me uh, I can have uh, the inside microphone of my laptop um, or uh, I can have uh, this is called um, USB this is my interface here so then I already have this one, then I can define the input of my uh, interface, which is a scholar. So I have the input. So whenever I go, um, I want to just, um, before hitting the recording, so here, when I hit um, a record button, when enable record button, you can see I have some inputs here. So I can 
if when I talk here um, in front of a microphone, you can see uh, that um, input of the sound is getting more. This uh, can be seen this uh, green uh, volume bar here. So then you can see there I have some input. And to record the sound, so I first I select this one because I already am a loop recording. And this is our foot step. The, the, the floor that this character walking here is like a stone. Maybe uh, you, we can guess it has some dirt as well. So we don't have a stone here, but we have some dirt here. And I prefer to walk somewhere that you see what is happening. Anyone can see if I look here? I hit recording, so it's not easy because I, at the same time I want to listen what I'm recording. Okay, I'm, I want to start recording here and then uh, I should change. Maybe for the first time I didn't, I don't catch this image here, but I wanna just, um, when I get there, I start recording for the second part. So it's gonna be, like what happens is all loop recording, and I should see the image as I'm recording. Go to the playlist I have. It should show me what I have recorded here. I can. If I change the uh, playback engine something maybe anyone can hear what is recorded. Well, it doesn't let me to uh, increase the loud, the loudness of the volume here in my laptop because it's already mirroring.
token is, uh, I can hear here on my laptop the sound come, but it's really weak. It doesn't mean, yeah, I want to just, I, I just mirror this one. This is why. Broken work. So we're having technical difficulties here. This is not. <laughs> this is the computer. I don't see. Oh, there it is. There we go. Are we like. Okay, so then. Find it. Am I on the other side? This side. Here we go. Can you mirror this one then? Oh, yeah, it? sure. So I'm yeah. going to mirror it. Yeah. And then what I was going to do is going to go into the audio yeah. settings. Okay. And try to send it through this because this we can turn off. If that's loud enough. Okay, let's see. Why? Anyone can hear? Yeah. It's really subtle, but. So I, I, I'm sorry. It's it's better we had a big speakers here to hear instead of uh, having. Um, iMac here, this speaker, the small speaker of um, MacBook Pro, sorry. Okay, this is the sound we just recorded for these footsteps. It's not ideally sync, but you can, this is the first act for uh, sound, uh, sound effect for these footsteps. And then we have this character in addition to uh, this uh, footstep we have. You, you may think of some cloth path here. But let's just, you're going to add um, some cloud movement for this character as well. It's not just uh, footstep. So it's all the details that you want to add as well. So I want to, instead of using this uh, part, uh, maybe we can find more footstep in other areas here. I want to consolidate this part as well, select this area, and then um, we have footstep and uh, we, we already I already showed you how to record footstep putting just just sing the act and put the microphone close to the source of the sound repeating the act and uh, just with this footstep and record it but here I want to in, instead of footstep I show you how you do the process okay so instead of um, I guess this um, material maybe so um, I want someone help me and just yeah, keep this microphone and then I repeat the act because I can at the same time do this one. Okay. Here, I, again, in this act I just selected, in addition, it, it starts uh, from the, from the pre-roll we selected for this one. It doesn't start exactly at the way he starts walking. So we, uh, we have footstep here, but we want to add some, um, uh, I don't go again to show you how to record footstep for, for this walking, but here I want to show you how record uh, this cloth pass. So uh, we don't use the actual, uh, you know, you, say, you think, okay, we have cloth mm, on our body and we walk, when we walk, we record this one. So it, it doesn't capture well because we want to a little bit exaggerate the sound of walking uh, with, and the cloth pass or cloth movement here. So if I hit recording, I want to enable this one. Okay. 
now I should come back to the playback engine. So the reason I'm doing that because the output of m what I'm recording here is uh, the input and output is different when I use this interface or I, when I'm using my uh, laptop. So we wanted to hear the sound all together. I, I didn't want to just hear the sound only with headphone. And this is why I switched my playback engine to the microphone, in, the, the speaker inside my laptop. And now because I want to record the game, I want to hear the sound that uh, I want to record the sound using the microphone connected to this interface. So I had to switch back to this interface mm -hmm. to record the sound. Now I'm in the record, the loop recording mode, select the area and I hit a recording. Okay, it is telling me. Okay, let's see. That's enough. So now I should come back to see what I have recorded here. Again, coming back to so the mistake I made here, I didn't listen what I have recorded. So always record, uh, listen what you're recording. So now I I don't know what exactly I've recorded. It's not in sync with this. It sounds good, but it doesn't, it's, it's not in sync. Maybe I started sooner. Can you hear? No, I, I, but I suggest you come here. One, maybe closer if you don't hear. And, or I can, uh, maybe it's better because it's really detailed sound and my, um, the speaker of my laptop doesn't uh, to just give you that much chance to hear when you are far from here. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. For this example. Let me bring it up here. It's gonna be too loud, maybe. Uh, it's very subtle, but nice. So let's say, just imagine this one being added to the with the foot step. Just give more action, just action, or maybe uh, detail to this act that happened here, right? Again, the same. Um, let's see. 
other example here. I wanna put it, make it louder. So I think that one I mean just I we just play was better, but here. Yes. It's faster than the actual act. These are the way, this is a raw material, but if you record those uh, uh, detailed sound, it really enhance the game or uh, this, if it's filmed, in, enhance what you have, you have off, you, to offer the audience, okay? These are uh, things for foot step and cloth bath. Let's go to use uh, to this other um, things that we have here on uh, using like vegetables. I uh, unfortunately I didn't find any any um, just video that can help us to record sounds like. Uh, vegetable sounds but I want to record and play for you and then you guess you tell me which sound it can be okay, okay. maybe playing in another way so in this case I don't need to be in the loop mode uh, because I want to just um, create some different sounds because I don't have image now so uh, I just record um, this different sound and then I play this one and you tell me um, how do you feel. So let's come back to my interface here. Someone can help me. Yeah. Not this one. Oh, you want to? Yeah, this is for the stream. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Oh, oh. I got you. There you go. I want to hit recording and then. Okay. Okay, I wanna play so it was they are Still in the, yeah, it's still I should in the, change this. The source box. Okay. Why 
it doesn't. It's not process. You should think that one. Oh, it's not single data, right? Like. Or output is your thing. Output's okay. Or maybe I do I have any? Yes, I could oh. have sold off. Because you have just different kinds of sound you can create. <laughs> the best one is what like punching sound and it's all it just claim with this thing uh, other part can be taste sound you can add. Okay, and uh, the way just another example of using the celery is the best example for um, let me come back. Sorry. Yes. Sorry, it's just um like is that microphone equipped to like isolate out like just the noise the producer does it because I know like a couple people like make there's like just like some background noise in the background and it just plays the sound so like does it just does the microphone specifically just like isolate those kind of noises out? So we, do you mean when you record with this um, mic we don't have that much background noise here or environmental noise? Uh, yeah. So it depends on you know for instance here the noise should be this um, my uh, my computer or other computers here, but they are far from this, the uh, front of this microphone. It's capture better the signals coming to the front of microphone. So then the, the ratio of signal to noise here is much higher than the, we even consider the other noises. But if you use some other microphones, they are like capturing, they are directional, the omnidirectional, they, they can, they react to the noise that coming that much far here to the source of sound that coming that much far. So then if the distance of the sound of the source or the um, volume or um, uh, the amount of sound that here being similar, so it doesn't matter, they capture all, all of them equally. But here this mic, um, it's only capture the sound better when they're coming to the front and reject all the sound coming from the side and the back somehow. This is one. Okay, and I, we're gonna capture, uh, record some sound with cell phones and compare with what we have here um, uh, using this microphone. So let's go to the other uh, kind of sound that we can record here and then after that we're gonna switch on um, cell phone. Okay, it seems we're gonna have
Okay, I if you want to have more strong sound for this, you can use um, just not just one one of these. You can use all of them and you break there, then you have, have more strong sound for this one. So, uh, do you have any question for using uh, this uh, software to record sound? No? Okay. Can you change like, the pitch? And yes, the yeah, there are some plugins that offer, uh, you can use here. If you, as this one, you go to Audio Suite and it gives you pitch shift here. And then you can go here and change the pitch here by adding some delays and giving some feedbacks. And what is the, you can bring this here. And here is the range wide. You can change this to high. And the threshold is going to be minus six. You can bring it even down or high. And you can go from like if I b go to the low pitch here, so you can hear what does what does it suggest. I am I in. But if I go to the high pitch. These are exaggerated because you, I really changed and the actual pitch is here, but I went to really high. Does the IRC have this hardware? This one? The, the IRC, does it have the hardware? Uh, yeah, uh, I think this IOBOX, I, I guess they have, mm -hmm. but I don't think they have microphone. They, they don't they, have the shotgun mics? I'm not sure about shotgun, okay. I, but I know they don't have this kind, this specific one. Okay. Yeah. We, we, even the school of film didn't have the, we purchased this last year. Okay. Mm. You can use other shotgun or, or other directional mic or microphone if they have. Mm -hmm. the, you're gonna have the same, but it, it depends on the frequency response that the uh, microphone suggests. Okay. So the, the frequency or response of the microphone, if it's close to the linear, then it's gonna be defined this as high quality microphone. But okay. some microphones, they are better respond to low or only mid frequency not high frequency, some uh, respond better to only mid or high, they are not good on low frequency. But this microphone, is the frequency response is, all, it's not completely linear, but it had a good response to high and low frequency as well as mid frequency. Okay, no question for the software. Can we switch to the phone? Yeah. Okay, good. L if you have your, your, the cell phone, just try to find this app. Voice record. I'm gonna show you, let me search to see. Uh, hopefully I find it here. Here, it should look like this one. Anyone? So we download this app uh, on your cell phone. Then I can find, you wanna see my emails. Right. Okay, I gonna bring
Do you have it? Just, yeah. just let me know when you record. Yes. Yeah. When you, yeah, okay. When you download, you when you get this uh, app, when you get inside, uh, just it gives you different mm -hmm. options. But we're gonna just directly to go choose what we, we what helps us. I go to the record, in the record part here, it gives me two options. It's one is preset, but we don't care about what does preset tell us. We go to the advanced. Okay, to the advanced parts, uh, we're gonna always, um, what I suggest you, because it is a format thing, has more data of it, uh, and then you can use in different places. WAV, we call it wave. The format is wave, and you don't go with MP3 or something else. WAV, okay? And then, for the sample rate, the higher sample rate you have, the more you have more frequency ranges on your sound you're recording. So uh, for the video, any, any medium that you want to use that has image, always go for, for, for 48 kilohertz, 40, 48,000, okay? Choose the sample rate. Whenever you have image, go with 48,000. Uh, for music people, choose 44.1 kilohertz, but uh, us, because we are working with film and videos, we go for with 48 kilohertz. Uh, for bit depths, for bit depths, the higher bit depths you have, the more, more dynamic range you're gonna have. More dynamic range here is the difference between the most soft sound you have than the, uh, the highest sound you have of your, in your recording track. So I choose 32 bits. I don't think the, our cell phone or the microphone in our cell phone being, can be tolerated 32, but the, the, if you choose anything around 24 bit depths or 32, you will be fine, okay? If, if one time you record, you think, okay, it uh, it's, doesn't matter you are in 24 or 32, 24 maybe works better for uh, the device we have. Uh, for channels, um, we only have this uh, channel microphone. So, um, we don't have a stereo microphone to go with the stereo. Choose mono, my mono channel, okay? For the channel, choose mono, and then uh, the other parts, it doesn't that much uh, matter. So then you can hit record. When you hit record, you can record the sound you have, and the mo mo we know microphones on our cell phones, they are here, okay? So you wanna direct this, this, your uh, cell phone, don't cover this, um, your microphone when you're recording. So you, you wanna have this one and shoot this uh, microphone to the source of sound you're recording here, okay? So I wanna record this time some watermelon, not my watermelon, some uh, orange here, because it really sounds good when you're recording. Uh, start with all parts of this. Getting, can you, someone can, someone help me? Do you want to record? If you want to record for uh, yourself, it's okay. But no, it's fine. <laughs> you can we, we use both, um, both of them. Uh, I don't know if my settings are correct. But I'll, I'll just stick with this for now. Okay. So if you hit record, okay, then you, you're going to have view meter here and shows you, um, shows you uh, the loudness of the sound you're recording. You don't want to go to the red part. The red part shows that your, the sound you're recording is distorted. So you're going to stick somewhere between 5 dB or 3 dB, okay? Okay. Okay, here. So you, you don't want to go to the red. When it shows you that you are in the red area, it means that you are uh, doing um, distorted sound. So you're recording distorted sound. So now I'm going to stop it and I want to record again. Okay.
Okay, the sound is recording is really good for the surgery scene. <laughs> yeah, I wanna play it. And you, thank you. When you record uh, the sound, you can use these um, options that give you. You're gonna send it to by email. You wanna just uh, save to iCloud. You wanna save to Dropbox and another Wi-Fi download. If you hit this Wi-Fi download, it gives you address. You it, you go to the address that it gives you exactly. I put the numbers and then download the sound you just recorded. Okay, it's really. Um, easy for you to uh, save this, uh, have this, uh, save this uh, recorded sound. So let's use this one before the foot step. I want to show you that you don't need always to have really professional equipment to record sounds. And make sure the, uh, the always make sure everything is work well here. I want to hit record and walk. So I didn't play any image. I only just uh, you. I always recommend you see the image uh, you are recording sound for because, for instance, for this footage step, you want to just uh, follow the step uh, exact. Uh, pace of uh, walking, you want to see how fast the character walk or how slow and then you want to completely follow the uh, step. I, I, if I play, now I recorded this one, the only... So this, um, because we have this uh, microphone, later you can bring, add, uh, you can bring this one to your, um, for instance, adult audition that you're gonna have. So you can use EQ. Bring down um, a little mid frequency and a little add high frequency to have more detailed sound. Because if the microphone usually have, we only cover the mid range frequency because what matters, the dialogue. Because it's all about conversation. And the, the human dialogue, you mainly cover mid range frequency. And um, you mainly it capture mid range, uh, frequency we have, you can a little bit bring this mid-range and add high frequency to this one, or maybe low frequency that a little bit bring, uh, it doesn't uh, sound perfect, but it, at least it uh, gives, um, bring down this uh, telephonic sound that we have, okay? So I wanna play a video now. Do you have any question for? This kind of a USB microphone also can be helpful for your purpose, uh, but uh, always um, to see if they are directional. And um, the directional microphone works better, like um, cardioid microphones, they are directional, you can use them. And you can uh, just study the frequency response of the microphones uh, to purchase one that uh, works better for your purpose. So here, um, I want to see the, the acts and uh, record the sound. For instance, I want to start from the first um, position we have. is all about cloud movement. And you can put your, for instance, man, I'm I going to put this um, iPhone here, my iPhone here, and hit recording, and then I uh, play uh, this um, in front of my uh, phone here. I hit play. 
Nu no, să ai. Ai trecut. Yeah. Okay, I think maybe here instead of so let's try it another way. completely different. Okay, uh, we can bring this uh, sound to uh, like other audition and um, do some changes, manipulate the sound maybe to see if we can get the sound we want to uh, record, but we want to have in for, for instance, this one. So let's use this material to see how so here we, what we hear i cannot uh, hear the sound because i don't have my headphone here but you can put your headphone here to listen what you're recording unfortunately i forgot to bring my headphone so if you you put your headphone here and you listen what you're recording maybe it gives you better than not repeating some mistakes or maybe get to the sound you exactly want Let's record with this material. The cell phone user doesn't uh, give us good result for using uh, this material. Maybe we have to use other tricks to receive what we want from this image. Um, other, maybe lighter. Is it possible that it's picking up that plastic moving on the table too? As I see it walking all around. This one? Yeah. So because when I put this one, I had this, uh, I, I recorded here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was not... But the plastic moving. was moving. Moving? Yeah. I'm just wondering if it was making any noise. I know. Yeah, because that time you're, yeah, you, it can it can be, yeah. Well, let's see. I was thinking maybe it's the wind coming from the movement of the clock. Like it's too, too much wind, it's kind of like throwing off. It can just mainly, what the, my, my concern here is mainly the... Frequency that it absorbs is only 
that the one that uh, doesn't cover low frequency we would want for mm. this sound. Okay. It only gets some uh, just mid range that is all about. Um, it's it's like um, more more movement of the the, the the actual material of this one than the, the movement of we want for. So let's see. We now we are in distance. So let's see what what happens. But This is why we have like plastic sound because it it only capture part of this frequency, not the whole. So this is a problem we have. For some purposes, uh, this phone it seems works well, but not for cloud pass mm -hmm. because cloud pass mainly they they are on high frequency and low frequency. That's really a beautiful er, illustration of why you want a good microphone. Yes. Yeah. And you could you could hear how well we had this class pad when we recorded mm -hmm. this one. How sound just it give you a real, a really some volume to these movements. Mm -hmm. We had that one that with using this microphone. But for the cell phone, although we could have like good um, sample, it give us maybe sample rate and bit depth, but it's like really it's fake because the actual. Um, things that should capture the sound is not here. So although we have 48 uh, kilohertz sample rate that help us to have more frequency ranges, we know human ears can hear uh, frequency range between 20 to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So uh, for 48 kilohertz, it seems it captures all the frequency ranges we need. But the problem here, the actual uh, sound uh, the actual material that can get should transfer this sound which is microphone is not able to capture them uh, you may uh, let's record some vegetable sound with this to see how it sounds uh, comparing with what we have recorded with
<laughs> so, uh, what do you think comparing with what we recorded with this microphone? Yeah, way better. Yeah, it was more, uh, again, this time it's like, uh, what I felt is like I had like the cover, cho cho chocolate cover between, this, you know, I could sound, uh, hear like sound something like chocolate cover between, or plastic sound between this sound. While we, it, it was all the same material we recorded with this. And I also noticed this one can isolate the echo and also the yeah. reverberation in the room, right? It's like, mm -hmm. sounds like shh, that it's constant when you record with a phone. Yes, exactly. So uh, obviously we're going to have a lot of reverberation with yeah. here because of this, even walls, because of this all um, windows on top. Uh, Hopefully, just the good thing that we have some car carpet bring down this reverberation here, but uh, for the walls, they are, they, we have, still we have a lot, but uh, because it's <laughs> directional, it capture, it doesn't, you know, let this other, this reverberation coming back. When they come, they're already dead. Um, they already, because so it's... Can you talk to us about how uh, sometimes in sound recordings, they use smaller rooms and they have foam in the walls? What, what is that all about? Okay, when you are inside, um, it doesn't matter sometimes if you are in the small room or big room. What does matter is how you avoid this reverberation or, you know, just you use some materials. Uh, with, uh, the best thing when you have, um, in a, like, let's say in your bedroom. So it's better you have some carpet on the floor <clears throat> and also the curtains. And for the walls, if you have really... Even though it's better you put some materials that they are not even, so they then reject these reverberations. If you have seen in some studios, they, they use some foams uh, on, uh, in different um, material, in not material, in different shapes uh, beside each other, because this, this uh, not only the foam, not only absorbs sound, but, but this uneven surface reject the, uh, Rejects uh, the reverberation. When you're recording sound, never go to the corners. The mm -hmm. corners, these corners, is uh, give you a lot of reverberations. Uh, you never do this one. Um, or you can use some, add some blanket to the area that you're recording because they, they have thick. When you have thick materials, they uh, uh, absorb very well this uh, uh, reverberations. Um, and uh, if you have it, like um, you yourself, you want to do, it's better um, you use some microphone. Uh, when you have some clothes that has um, thicker, they um, absorb this all reverberation better than this other clothes you have. Yeah. Any other question? So, like, No, no, the blanket maybe, if you don't have image there when you're recording sound, the problem maybe on the set they have because you can put some blanket in the area and put your microphone here and then you record sound. Yeah. Uh, always, I, I, I'm telling you, it just, um, we just only wanted to, to show you, but it's better always you see the image, play the image, and then record the sound because you you don't want to repeat uh, just or later you ha you don't want to have to sit and sing and edit this uh, the sound you recorded. As you see the walking, the footsteps you record them. As you see the act um, um, like uh, touching some um, material, uh, you see that the character touched like gun or touched something. So you want to just repeat the act uh, as you see the image and record it. Any other question? I'm not sure uh, which kind of microphone the uh, library has, but uh, usually they give you this in the information of the microphone, or you can find the name and Google it to see if they, um, they are directional and which pattern they suggest, and also see the frequency response that they microphone has and then you can borrow and record the sound you have. And also there are other sound recording.
orders. I'm not sure if the library has this one, but I guess they have Tascam. This can be something similar to this one, but Tascam microphone doesn't have this stereo microphone. This is a Zoom H6. You can uh, use this um, uh, device to record sounds you want. It gives you a lot of opportunities using this stereo also. This has four XLR external microphone that you can connect to this and, all you, and you can monitor them or add the gain by using all these knobs. So when you're recording sound with some devices, either using IO box or this uh, sound recorder, you, when you are listening, what you can uh, control, how you can control the input of the sound with the gains. If you add more gains, you have, it means you add more voltage to the sound you're recording, then it's gonna be louder. When, you, when sound is too loud, you can bring it a little down. So usually, uh, you listen before you're recording, listen to the sound to see which gain is better. Um, is better. For instance, this one, uh, for this stereo, I have uh, this knob here. I can control the sound, the gain for this stereo. And for different channels, for channel one, I can control with this one, channel two here, channel three here, and channel four. And you can record them. And when you are recording sound in the settings, always, again, uh, choose higher uh, uh, bit depths that it gives you and uh, the, the frequency, uh, uh, what was, the sample rate, for the sample rate, choose 48 kilohertz. This is the standard that you should uh, choose for the, the sound uh, recording for the image. How about the microphones on that? Are there, do those have like a good high-low range? No, they are not that much. Okay. Uh, you know, they, 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 uh, the frequency response of this thing comparing to what we had is not that much okay. perfect. You know, it's not that much good, but at least it's much better than what we have. Better than the phone? Okay. I have a device that's similar to this. If anybody wants to use it, just let me know. Yeah, great. It's not as fancy as that. <laughs> <laughs> She's a professional, though. I'm an amateur. <laughs> no, it's actually, it's, uh, we call it this semi-professional. It's not the uh, zoom, This is a Zoom H6. Recently, they uh, they gave Zoom F6. That one is much professional and uh, much expensive than this one. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Okay, I hope you, you've enjoyed and learned something from this session. And if you have any questions, you can have my email. From, uh, my email is my first name dot last name, uh, raha dot shujai, uh, uh, San Jose State University edu. If you have any question on sound, I'm, I'd be, be more than happy to help. All right, thank you so much, Professor Kamiyama. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming again. We all appreciate it so much. We have a bouquet for you. Oh, thank you so much. Just because you took the time out of your day. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The best thing for me is just being seen that you learn something and you enjoy this one. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Really All right, so the meeting is concluded now, and everyone feel free to go drop off, but ask us any questions if you want. And yeah, thank you for coming today, everyone. Yeah, see you next week. <laughs> see you next week. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yo, hop on Fortnite right now. Right now, get your PC. Yo, my guy, yo, hop on Fortnite.